wants his volunteers over countering problems to build four multifunctional rapid screening stations in Kaohsiung. Malaysia to the volunteers provide timely financial assistance to five survivors in Sabah to rebuild their homes. 欢迎收睇大爱吃辣椒，我系 Ruby 五，我哋一齐睇下今日嘅内容。In view of the increasingly tense pandemic in southern Taiwan, Suzi has set up four screening stations, which are located in Luzhou, Meilong, the Veteran General Hospital, and Tangen Memorial Hospital in Kaohsiung. The multifunctional screening stations may also be used as a vaccination place in the future. We started to pull over from the railing. If you need stairs, remove a set of railings. Each section of the steel frame is a big specification. If the total length touches the railing, it's a simple project to remove it. There are more height differences as the challenge will be greater, so we propped height up to create a platform. After solving the problem of the different heights, the foundation was set for the Kaohsiung Veteran General Hospital screening station. Emergency treatment or diversion is done here, and some special cases are moved here to reduce the chance of infection in the hospital. Thank you, Tiji, for considering others, loving others, and loving the world. I would also like to thank the Tiji Foundation for donating screening stations to Kaohsiung City, Luzhou Park, Meilong, Kaohsiung Veterans General Hospital, and Chang'e Memorial Hospital. I would like to express my special gratitude to the Tiji Foundation for allowing us to have a strong backing during the epidemic prevention period. Completing four screening stations in four days has helped expand the rapid screening capacity of the various communities in Kaohsiung. The Kaohsiung city government has signed a memorandum of cooperation with us, hoping that Zhiji can provide rapid screening stations this time. This is for emergency rapid screening, and it may also be used as a place for vaccination in the future because it is a large-scale station. Collaborating with Pandemic Task, establishing a multifunctional rapid screening station has become a model in southern Taiwan. While the number of beds in the hospitals of northern Taiwan is very tight, the South Central Hospital is ready to take over to accommodate COVID patients. Zhang Tianhua of Danian Suzhou Hospital volunteered as a dedicated ward care physician. With the support of his family, he hopes to take care of more COVID patients and bring the pandemic under control. Putting on protective clothing, Zhang Jianhua, as a surgeon, has taken the initiative to devote himself to a ward dedicated to treating COVID patients since June. I know that in the future there will be some doctors who also hope that after I finish the task this month, they can continue to take on it. I want to let everyone know that someone is actually willing to take care of the patients. They are not afraid of no back down when facing with homeless people who are out of control and are willing to cooperate with screening. They also try their best to ensure them. After arguing with us for about 10 minutes, now he finally cooperates. It is a marvelous moment. What can we do is calm the emotions and find ways to successfully accomplish the task. Zhang Jianhua is most grateful for the support of the family, so that he has no worries and accompanies the patients to the difficulties. My wife thinks it's okay, just go, and she'll take care of the child. I'm very grateful to my wife. In the midst of recent pandemic, large number of suspected cases has put medical staff under high pressure, and there has been insufficient screening and nursing manpower. The government has called on many doctors and nurses to participate in community screening, with many answering the call of duty. We initiated a call for ENT doctors to support frontline medical staff and participants in community screening stations. In just a few hours, 320 grassroots ENT specialists volunteered. 
诊所医师来相挺。这个 The special significance of this inspection station is that it is the first inspection station supported by doctors from local clinics. That even long-term care institutions cannot escape the virus. An elder care institution in Wanghua had an elderly person suspected of being diagnosed with COVID. Chen Jianye, a self-practicing ENT doctor, took a special break from his clinic and went to the long-term care institution to assist in screening. The first time I wore the protective clothing was when we visited the Sky Garden on the sixth floor of a long-term care institution. It was really hot. The problem was that some rural residents are not so cooperative and will struggle during the test. Unlike most of us who are mentally prepared to do it, some will still struggle and need to have two nurses to hold on him, one grasping his head or the other his hand. When I put my hand in to take the specimen, he escaped my hands and turned his head away. So we have to grab their hands and head and do a check just like we are doing it on a child. Uniting to fight the epidemic, the medical capacity is being put to a test. Grassroots medical care is overwhelmed. If the situation of the early night shift remains as original, one person will probably take care of about 10 patients. You can also imagine that for the patients staying in the hospital during the pandemic, in fact, their medical conditions are not easy to treat. For the nurses who take care of the confirmed patients, there is a lot of pressure because you have to rush quickly. But you should also be careful and pay attention and control things slowly. I think this is a lot of pressure on nurses as we worry about whether there will be a breach of epidemic prevention and we will bring ourselves if something like this really happens. I work almost every day for almost 16 hours. The main thing is that there is work in the hospital and work in the quarantine area. My children and husband have to look after themselves and I am not worried. So when I go home, I just go and take a rest. Because of the demand for medical staff, retired nurses have been rekindled with a sense of mission and have returned to the front line of work. The most important thing is to screen nurses to perform our anti-epidemic and pandemic prevention tasks. So today we had 512 registered nurses reported. This means that our care includes mental health of our residents. In addition to care, we mainly provide daily support. The workload is heavy, and medical staff have stood firmly at the front line to protect many Taiwanese from the pandemic. In face of severe pandemic, some people may feel nervous, stressed, and even suffer from dizziness, chest tightness, and other physical discomforts. The clinical psychologist of Danian Tsuzu Hospital teaches everyone to adjust our mood and resume a clear mind by mindful breathing. Here I announce that level 3 alert will be extended to June 28. The pandemic situation in Taiwan is severe and the level 3 alert continues to be extended. Many people are in a state of high stress, overwhelmed by negative emotions such as nervousness and fear. What I worry the most is invisible carriers. I'm afraid there will be a droplet transmission. Like when I come to the hospital, I will wrap my phone and disinfect it with alcohol. Too much stress often affects life seriously. Clinical psychologists suggest that one can practice mindful breathing. First of all, whether you are sitting, standing or laying down, you can keep yourself in a balanced position. Coupled with natural deep breathing, accept the present status and calm the mood. The benefits of mindful breathing is to find the connection of yourself, including the connection between yourself and your body, or the connection between yourself and your mind. It can allow you to get ready aware of your physical condition and thoughts and so on. The psychologist also suggests that one may as well do some gardening, yoga and cooking. Apart from epidemic prevention, everyone should also maintain a mindful attitude.
in Sabah, Malaysia, serious fire broke out in two villages, causing hundreds of people to be homeless. Fortunately, no one was injured. So the volunteers immediately mobilized to conduct disaster survey and distribute consolation cash to help the survivors pass through this difficult time. The fire went from there to here. When I ran out of the house, I was too rush and didn't bring anything, not even clothing. Only these are the ones I was able to bring out. This is my home. The ruthless fire burned a village in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, to ruins. We are still unable to determine the cause of the fire, but based on the information we got before, some villagers told us that the fire was from a short circuit. After the curtain caught fire, the flame spread. The villagers were left homeless and had to stay in the evacuation center temporarily. This is the problem we are facing now. We were just placed in an evacuation center temporarily, but after that, where can we go? Our homes are destroyed. So the volunteers went there to show concern. After assessing the damage, they distributed relief aid to 53 households. When we went there because of the pandemic, the Ministry of Health officers did not allow too many of us, but just one or two volunteers to go in. So we cannot be very sure about the survivor's name, and we didn't have much contact with them. We have to wait for the welfare department to provide us with the name list and then call the survivors one by one to ask them. Just 10 days after the accident, another fire broke out in a village 20 minute drive away. 33 floating wooden houses were raised to the ground overnight. I don't know the cause of the fire as we were sleeping at the time. When we woke up, the fire has already spread. Fortunately, there are only nine families living in the evacuation center. The rest of the survivors went to their relatives and friends' home to stay temporarily. My mother, brother and dad are living with me now. My house is rented and it's larger, so it's fine to live together. I will accept the consolation cash given by you because I want to rebuild my home. I will ask the money first, as the present food supply is abundant. Suzy gave consolation cash to bless the survivors and help them rebuild their homes as soon as possible. Master Zheng Yan has always said the pride of Taiwan is its compassion and love. In the past 55 years since Suzy was established, the organization has set food in over 124 cities and countries, helping the less fortunate. But how does Suzy have the strength to help the needy? It is from the regular donation of Suzy members, who individually might not make large amounts of donations, but little by little to accumulate in love to help the needy. The recycling station in front of Lin Xiaolan's home is open during the day and night. Her heart is not disabled, although her hand may hinder her a bit. Her determined heart is as strong as anyone's. These volunteers bend down to organize recyclables, and for many years now, many have also donated funds to Tsuji and without asking for a return. She had lots of loves to share. She often donates one after another. I haven't seen how the master worries about the sentient beings, so I can only do what I can to help. <laughs> I have been donating for over 30 years, and although I don't give much, it's the thought that counts. I'm helping so the master can help less fortunate. This is what I found most joyful about it. Thank you for encouraging me with your love. Lin <laughs> Xiaolan has about 200 or more Tsuji members under her.
By donating to the ITV, you are helping the master spread Dharma to more places. The more you do, the more blessings there are in the world. Don't underestimate 20 NT dollars. It's very useful in Africa. It can buy lots of items. So in turn, you are forming good affinities with over a thousand countries. It must rely on so many people who see the same way and are willing to do it in order for the organization to have so much strength so these people can reach so many different places. Siji has lent support all over the world, and Siji's footprints can be seen in 124 regions. When you think about it, one person cannot accomplish much, but a team of people can do great things. That's why there's a saying, an individual can walk fast, but a group can walk further. Father Giuseppe Didone, who has been in Taiwan for half a century, wrote a letter to Tsuji congratulating the organization on their 55th anniversary. In the letter, he says everyone is equal and needs to care, respect, and look after one another. The father has the utmost respect for the master. Although she is Buddhist, her actions and spirits are in line with Jesus, St. Mary, and Pope Francis who all love others like their own. There's plenty of love in Taiwan, and we are just helping to spread and inspire it. Perhaps our strength may not be strong, as in the past we would canvas donations on the street and ask people to donate what they could, but accumulated it has helped do great things. Chen Shouying is now 65, and she decided when she was 31 that her calling in life was to help the less fortunate. I think in my life, there are more meaningful things for me to do than working life to five. She tried to resign from her work many times, and it was a solemn and sincere letter to her boss that she finally succeeded. In junior high, I joined a national girls' military camp, and the motto was to aim for a life filled with truth, compassion and beauty. When I joined the workforce, I could not find that place in society. While doing Tsuji's charity work, she found what she was looking for. In the end, I felt that Tsuji is a well food with truth, compassion and beauty. When Tsuji was established in 1966, the average GDP for a Taiwanese was 249 US dollars. And compared to the average GDP for an American, which was over 22,000, it was 93 times the Taiwanese average. Now in 2020, Taiwan's GDP has increased to over 28,000 US dollars, while the US is more than 63,000. But the difference has shrunk to 2.2 times the average. These number indicates that Taiwan's economy has risen in the past 55 years and also accumulated much compassionate credit in the country and the world. So the foundation is a good example. The volunteers in blue and white always show up in difficult situations, and their appearance deeply impacts the international community. They are also a representation of Taiwan's compassion. Then there's this other group of people who, although do not wear the official blue and white uniform, still holds Tsuji's missions close to their heart. Yan Aishu had over 500 Tsuji volunteers at one time. I asked her to become a certified volunteer, but she refused. She said she spends most of her month being there for these members and that she doesn't have time to do anything else. Hey Bodhisattva, let me give you your receipt. You asked me to pick up my receipt. Yes, this is yours. It's right here. These people are in the background, offering their services, being supporters. Yes, I like to involve and help make things harmonious and fill in the gaps. For elementary school, until now, I have always known for my patient to help. <laughs> Giving has never been the privilege of the rich, but those with plenty of hearts. Tsuji makes it easy for everyone and anyone to donate. Tsuji's donations are not taxing on the wallet. It's the amount you can give away. Sometimes when you ask someone to donate $2,000, they might not be able to give freely. But if you ask them to donate $200, this amount accumulates to be a big amount to help another. Love in action from all over helps change drops of water into streams. Tsuji helps those suffering domestically as well as 
internationally. Recently, Taichung Tzu volunteers took shifts to make vegetarian lunch boxes for the healthcare workers fighting against the pandemic, sending their blessings in the form of delicious vegetarian meals. Filipino spatula quickly with both hands is very laborious. Volunteers are busy cooking delicious food at the Xintian Diazan office to prepare lunch boxes for the frontline medical staff. The weather is so hot, the dishes have to change so that they will have a good appetite and eat more. 59-year-old Liu Yanxiang assists in picking and cutting vegetables, doing everything in the kitchen. In fact, some of these tasks are very trivial. I need someone to help. I'm willing to do it. Liu Yanxiang has two daughters and one son. Three children are all nurses. The eldest daughter is serving at Taichung Ziji Hospital. The severe pandemic worried her. My support for them is to make them feel at ease, and then we as parents will also feel at ease. She loves her children and cares for all the medical staff. Liu Yanxiang delivers her blessings through meal boxes. With a very happy mood and a very powerful force. She is a very diligent volunteer who can do everything. She just uses her dedication to prove her support to her children. During the severe pandemic, using food to warm the frontline medical personnel, this positive energy becomes more needed in society. To care for the health and also prevent homeless people from becoming a bridge of pandemic prevention, the Taichung City Social Bureau requested to see for assistance. Volunteers packed 300 pandemic prevention kits, which were then sent to the homeless through the Social Bureau. <laughs> The material packaging hands have not stopped. During the pandemic, few volunteers were mobilized, yet they were as efficient as before. We want to make the sanitary conditions of the homeless people better. We hope to hand over the supplies to them in the shortest possible time. I hope this pandemic will end as soon as possible. The anti-pandemic materials given to the homeless include masks, alcohol wipes, hand drying, soap, environmental friendly utensils, porridge, instant noodles, plus a liter from Master Zheng Yan, a total of 11 items. During the pandemic, anti-epidemic materials are hard to find. We actually hope to provide these homeless people with some peace of mind. Ziji provided some supplies and cared for the homeless. I hope that the homeless people are willing to come out to do the rapid screening, so they won't become a breach in pandemic prevention. 300 kits of anti-pandemic materials will be transferred to the Taichung City Social Bureau for the further delivery to the homeless people. Taichung Tzu Nursing Home strictly abides by anti-epidemic regulations and prohibits visitors. The medical personnel make good use of video technology to allow residents and their families to pass on their feelings. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and see you next time.